Yeoman generators can be used to scaffold out everything you need to start a new project. A sub-generator can be used to scaffold out smaller pieces of that project. So let's say that we're working on a new web application using something like Backbone. A sub-generator can be used to scaffold out a new model, view, collection, router, or another atomic piece that's sort of specific to the framework that you're working with. So let's take a look at what this might look like. So um, I'm working with a new Backbone application, which I've scaffolded out using the generator Backbone generator for Yeoman. And I can install it using npm install generator Backbone, and then just run it using Yo Backbone. Now I've already done this in this directory, so I'm just going to open up Sublime and take a look at what this has given us. So it's created us an index, it's um, scaffolded out some very basic scripts, it's installed our, our Backbone dependencies using Bower, but I actually want to start working um, with new models and collections. Now I can use subgenerators to do this for me. So I can call yo backbone, and then when I say model, this is going to go and call the model subgenerator, and I can pass it a file name so I can save to do, and it can then go and use this input to scaffold out all the boilerplate needed for a new model. So let's just hit enter and see what that does. And what you'll see in scripts is that it's created a new subdirectory called models and inside there a file called todo.js. So here we have some boilerplate code that have been, has been already written up for us. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that it says test app, and this has been created as sort of a namespace. Now it's picked this up based on the directory that we're currently in and created sort of a same naming scheme that we can go and use. It's also created a sub namespace called models, which is all tied together. So models, collections, views, they're all tied together in a namespace um, in main.js. So here we see that it's created um, sort of a new to-do model based on our input, and this all seems very sound. Um, I can go and I can add some defaults and some more logic for this model if I want it. Uh, let's say that the next thing we want to do is actually go and uh, create a new collection. We can call the collection subgenerator just by typing in collection, and then similarly passing it some input. So I'm going to call my collection to-do as well. And what you'll see happen is that a new collections um, subdirectory has been created with a file called todo.js. Now, in addition to writing some of the boilerplate for this collection, you'll see that it's also automatically linked this up to the to-do model that we just created as well, meaning that you don't have to worry about doing this yourself. Now, if we head back to our index file, what you'll see is that it's actually already um, added all of the script tags necessary to wire these up, which is great. So let's say that the next thing I want to do is maybe create a new backbone view. So I can call yo backbone view and we'll call this to do as well. This is interesting because in addition to going and creating that subdirectory views with some boilerplate for our view, it's also gone and created a new template file for us in the template subdirectory. So here we just include some of the HTML for a particular views template. And um, that just shows you that sort of subgenerators can do whatever they want. They can create new directories, they can create new files. Um, they're capable of doing a lot more. So a subgenerator can pretty much do anything that a generator can. Um, they can go and fetch you dependencies from Bower or GitHub. Uh, they can wire up different pieces inside your application. And they basically help extend your workflow as you're sort of building up the different logical pieces of your app or your site. So that's it for subgenerators. I hope that you, uh, you find them useful.